The last topic that we're going to record a video on here um, for polar calculus is arc length. Um, the textbook also looks at surface area. Um, but again, it's more or less, you know, you, you derive the formula for a surface area and you kind of go from there. It's for um, solids of revolution. Okay, so arc length. Let's review. Uh, we, we know that for, for a parametric curve, you know, say uh, x of t, y of t with t in, say, a, b, we know that the length of the curve is given by the integral from a to b, square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. Right. Integrate with respect to dt. All right, so the catch is that when we're dealing with a polar curve, polar curves really technically are parametric curves, right? Um, so for a polar curve, you know, so we, we usually give that in terms of like r is equal to f of theta, right? Um, we have, well, x, remember that x is r cos theta, right? So x is actually f of theta cos theta. Uh, y is r sine theta, right? So f of theta sine theta. Okay. Well, that being the case, I can calculate x prime of theta. Right? It's going to be, well, we've got to use product rule. So f prime of theta cos theta minus f of theta sine theta. Uh, y prime is going to be f prime of theta sine theta plus f of theta cos theta. Um, now, things are about to get a little bit messy because, of course, we're supposed to square. x prime of theta squared. We get uh, f prime of theta squared cos squared theta minus 2 f prime of theta f of theta sine theta cos theta um, plus f of theta squared sine squared theta and why you, you, you're probably feeling like this is hopeless right now yeah but um, actually it's gonna work out okay in the end f prime squared sine squared plus 2 f prime of theta f of theta sine theta cos theta for the cross term here um, plus f of theta squared uh, sorry, not sine, cosine squared theta. Oh, and now we see, now we see that we're in luck because these cross terms are equal but opposite. So if we add them together, those are going to cancel. And then sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So when we add those, pull out the common factors, we're in luck, right? What we get is that for a polar curve, um, so, you know, so let's say this becomes maybe theta between alpha and, and beta. Well, then we're going alpha, beta, square root. So we're just going to, you know, use theta as the parameter instead of t. We work through everything, we simplify, we add it all up, and what we get is f of theta squared plus f prime of theta squared d theta. Okay, so the formula works out all right in the end, which might make us hopeful that we can do something reasonable here. Okay, so let's see. This is my 
f of theta. So f prime of theta is going to be 2 cos theta. Um, now, for the limason, if you think about what the limason looks like, um, this particular one, if I remember right, I believe goes something like this, goes around. I think it has this sort of inner loop, right? So Something like that. It's not perfect. Um, but um, this is going to be a full you know, theta going from 0 to 2 pi, right? So theta runs from 0 to 2 pi to generate that entire Limasson curve. So the length is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi square root of f of theta squared, so 1 plus 2 sine theta squared plus f prime of theta squared, so 2 cos theta squared. Integrate with respect to theta, d theta, okay. All right, so what do we get? We get 1 plus 4 sine theta plus 4, uh, sorry, sine squared. Sine squared comes first. Well, not that it matters, but sine squared theta plus 4 cos squared theta. And we're maybe initially encouraged because some things simplify, but in the end we're left with this, 5 plus 4 sine theta. Okay. And that is an integral that, uh, try as you might, you're very unlikely to come up with an antiderivative here. In fact, I'm tempted to say it's impossible. So if we wanted to evaluate this thing, we're pretty much stuck using numerical integration, right? Simpson's method, something like that. We can get an approximate answer. An exact answer, I think, is uh, out of the question in this case, but that's okay. If you, you know, if you think about solving these problems realistically, um, we have computers, right? So <laughs> once you've got it to the point where you've got a definite integral, right? The, the hard work in, in doing a lot of these problems is setting up the integral. Once you've got the integral, we have all kinds of computer programs now that will evaluate that thing for you. So you plug it in, you get out the answer, and off you go.